Before we start studying the different types of tissues, it's important to learn how cells are held together to form tissues. And what holds cells together are cell junctions. And there are five main types of cell junctions. We have tight junctions, adhering junctions, gap junctions, desmosomes, and hemidesmosomes. All cells have a plasma membrane, right? And the plasma membrane is made by a phospholipid bilayer. And crossing this plasma membrane, we have several proteins, transmembrane proteins. We also have proteins that are just facing the outside, proteins that are just inside, and so on. Now, these proteins are there because they have a function in the plasma membrane. And if you think about the structure of a phospholipid bilayer, it is not static, right? It is in constant motion. And if the phospholipid bilayer is in constant motion, the proteins that we find in it are also moving. And these proteins, they can be moving in a rotational direction and they can be moving laterally. Now, what happens is that, let's imagine that these two cells that I'm drawing the nucleus right now, belong to the inner lining of our intestines. And this is the lumen of our intestines. So this is basically where we would find the digested or partially digested food going through the hollow cavity. Now, if we look at the opposite side of the cells, we would find a basement membrane, which is a membrane that we'll talk more later and as the name says it's at the base of the cells now would you expect to have the same proteins on the side of the cell that faces the lumen and on the side of the cell that faces the basement membrane no you'll not have the same proteins because each of these sides has different functions one side will be related basically with absorption of nutrients and ions, and the other side will be basically related with anchoring the cell to the place where it should be. So we will have different proteins in each side. So what happens is that the proteins that are facing the digested or partially digested food need to be kept in this side so they can do their job. Now, the plasma membrane is in constant motion, and these proteins would be able to move laterally. But that doesn't happen because close to the apical surface of the cell, which is the part of the cell that is facing the lumen, we find web-like proteins that basically stitch the plasma membranes of two cells that are right next to each other very, very tightly. And this stitching is located around the entire cell circumference. And at that level where we find these web-like proteins, we have the fusion of the two plasma membranes. So tight this stitching is. And since the plasma membranes are fused, these proteins that are facing the lumen, even if they want to move laterally, they cannot move laterally. They will be always facing the lumen. Now, besides that, when we have the plasma membranes getting fused at that level, whatever that's going through the lumen and will be absorbed, for example, let's think about water. This water molecule will not be able to be absorbed by passing in between two cells. And the only way for the water molecule to be absorbed will be by passing through the phospholipid bilayer or through a pore that is made by proteins. So also this tight, tight stitching seals off the passageway between two cells. And since it is very tight, it even causes the fusion of two plasma membranes that are next to each other. This junction between two cells is named tight junction. So in summary, tight junctions are web-like proteins that stitch two plasma membranes together, they are found close to the apical surface of the cell, and they are responsible for sealing off passageways between two cells that are right next to each other, and they inhibit the lateral movement of proteins that are present in the apical surface of the cell. Now, not as close to the apical surface as tight junctions, we find another type of cell junction. And this one is characterized by transmembrane proteins in one plasma membrane fitting 
with the transmembrane proteins of the plasma membrane that's right next to it. And these transmembrane proteins, they fit in a way that at this level, we have a structure that looks like a Velcro. And Velcro is what we find in kids' shoes. When you buy those shoes that they do not have shoelaces because they don't know how to tie shoelaces yet, so you buy the one that has a Velcro. So at this level, these transmembrane proteins basically click and form this Velcro-like structure on the space between two cells, which is named intercellular space. Now, if you're looking inside of each of these cells, we see that these transmembrane proteins that are creating this Velcro-like structure on the outside, they connect with acting filaments, which is one type of microfilament. And this goes around the entire cell. And then when you look at it, it looks like a belt and that's why this structure is also called adhesion belt. Now, the fact that this type of cell junction involves actin, which is part of the cytoskeletal of the cell, this cell junction adheres cells and provides the resistance necessary for these cells to not be separated when the tissue is contracting. For example, when the intestine is contracting to move the food along the tube. And the name of this specific cell junction that has actin is adhering. So adhering junctions are the ones that look like a Velcro belt and have actin on the inner side of the plasma membrane. Another type of cell junction looks like a Velcro, but it's in a button shape. It's not like a belt like the adhering junction. And this button that has transmembrane proteins that fit with the transmembrane proteins of the cell that's right next to it is named desmosome. But the desmosome, when we look at it on the inside of the cell, what we see is that these transmembrane proteins, they connect with keratin on the inside. And the adhering junctions connected with actin, right? Now, if you have keratin there, that allows you to recall that desmosomes are very popular in the skin because our skin has keratin, right? And basically, we find desmosomes in the epidermis of our skin. And also, we find desmosomes in the cardiac muscle, between the cardiac muscle cells. And desmosomes are very important because they keep the cells together when the tissue is under tension. So think of our skin, we have lots of tension in our epidermis, right? So the cells are kept together. Or when the heart is contracting. So every time the heart beats, the cardiac muscle cells are kept together. They are not pulled apart because of the presence of desmosomes. Now, the root hemi means half. So the cell junction named hemidesmosome is half of a desmosome. And to be half of a desmosome, it cannot be attaching one cell to another cell. It, in reality, attaches the cell to the basement membrane that is underneath the cell. So hemidesmosomes, they are half desmosomes. On the inside of the cell, we do find keratin, like we find in the desmosome. But on the outside, we see that the transmembrane protein of the hemidesmosome clicks with a protein in the basement membrane. And the name of the protein is laminin. So we have the hemidesmosome anchoring the cell to the basement membrane. Consequently, you can conclude that we only find hemidesmosomes on the basal surface of the cell. Because the basal surface of the cell is the surface of the cell that's in contact with the basement membrane. And with that, hemidesmosomes anchor the cell to the basement membrane. And lastly, we have the gap junction. As the name implies, we have a junction between two cells, and in this junction, we find gaps. So, when we look at the gap junction, we see that at that specific level, the plasma membrane of two cells that are right next to each other, they are very close. So, there is a very small intercellular space. 
there is a very small space between inter two cells. And when we look at that, we find channels. And these channels communicate the two cells, allowing the passage of small molecules and ions. So literally, we have gaps at the junction, hence the name gap junctions. And if we decide to look at the gap junction on the lateral aspect of a cell that's communicating with the cell that's right next to it, what we would see is a button shape in the region in the area of the gap junction. And that would be the region where we have the two plasma membranes very close to each other. Remember, I told you that we have a very small intercellular space. And then in there, we would find the channels. So little channels that allow the passage of small molecules and ions.